Welcome to Scorched Earth and a general reading for the sign of Virgo, Sun, Moon or Ascendant for the month of January 2023. Happy New Year. I hope you are well. I'm using the uh, Wild Unknown Tarot for you today. Before we go any further, I just want to uh, draw your attention to a couple of things. There will be an extended at the end of this if it resonates with you and you would like to go a little bit deeper. That's the first link in the description box. The second link in the description box is to the six month overviews that I've done for each of the signs running from January to June 2023. Um, and the third link in the description box is to my private community, the Order of the Phoenix over on Circle. So if any of those sound interesting to you, you know exactly where to look. But let's get on with this, uh, Virgo, and see what is going with, on with you. Can I have three cards for Virgo, please? We have the Hierophant in your recent past. Current energy for Virgo is the Ace of Pentacles. That's wonderful. I like that. And what's coming towards... Virgo for, mm, for January. I'm not going to take all of those because there's like four cards there and that's ridiculous. So I'll try that one again. We'll just shuffle them back in. What's well, coming towards Virgo, please, for January. Thank you. We have the Six of Swords. Interesting. <clears throat> we have the Nine of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck, which is very much concerned with your energy and where it is going, which seems particularly personal in the here and now since we do have the Ace of Pentacles right here. Um, suggesting that your attention is needed somewhere or that there's there's a possibility here of either opportunity or you creating one via intention um, simply because you put your energy to it so let's get some clarifiers and see what this is all about tell me about the hierophant please thank you we have the knight of wands and we have the sun Clarifying the Hierophant. What about the Ace of Pentacles, please? Thank you. Ooh, we have the Emperor. Ooh. Emperor and the Page of Swords. Are the Ace of Pentacles. And Six of Swords, please. What's going on here? We have the Four of Pentacles. And the Ten of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles was one of those that just glotted out a second ago. So that's interesting obviously wanted to come out we've got the six of wands at the bottom of the deck here followed by the chariot so there is movement here i mean there was movement implied anyway already with the cards that were on the table but <clears throat> we're getting a, a a double dosing of that with this chariot under here i mean the six of wands is a card of success it speaks to victory um, more than that it it, it it speaks to that sense of living a life where one is winning, right? It, it's full of joy. It's full of um, an ease to things that might distract us from that which is actually important, that which actually fills us up, you know? And the, the chariot being underneath it there, it's the card of cancer, but it's it's that idea of knowing where it is that you're going finally. It's about goal setting. It is too also about victory. Um, and one that seems far more likely now than it has done at any point up until now. I think that's the best way to put what I have. So we'll just flip these around a second so you can see my extremely messy setting up of the cards. And we start here with the Hierophant. That's Taurus energy. <coughs> And it's, it's one of, well, all of the tarot cards are multivalent, right? It, it can speak to business, it can speak to things that have been established for a long time. But I, I get this sense of heritage and legacy, which is interesting because I get the same feeling here of this, uh, this Ten of Pentacles quite often. We move these along so you can actually see them. <clears throat> heritage and legacy and commitment. It's like what exists and has existed for a long time and needs to continue to exist and what of what has existed for a long time actually isn't that important anymore we've got the knight of wands and the sun card appearing underneath here and i think that says a lot about your ability to live in the present um, it is increased a hundredfold somehow of late um, 
I mean, this is talking about the recent past, but uh, you know, this isn't uh, this isn't something that's occurred in a vacuum. This is going to be something that has built up over time, and it's almost like the the realization of this is what is hitting you now. It's like I am living in the present. I am here, and more than that, I'm looking for the joy. You know, your history might be something that is um, <clears throat> well. If you're a Virgo, frankly, and you're a Virgo who's spent any any amount of time on this channel then I think it's safe to say that your history is something that has been... I'm searching for the right adjective here because we could go with challenging, but we could also go with excoriating. We could go with um, extremely difficult or we could come up with a whole heap of other things here. There's been a lot of growth for you, Virgo, in the last couple of years. Would you want to repeat it? I suspect not. Um, but would you change it? I also think not. Because the Hierophant is sitting here in his wisdom and saying, right, you know, this is, this is what life has taught you and here are the difficult lessons that have been delivered to you and yet still you rise. I'm sure I've used that, that phrase with you before, Virgo. So I don't know if it was earlier this year or last year. Um, you've been to the gates of hell and you've come back again. And you're here and you're functioning. And more than that, you're expanding all of the things in your life that are good. They're expanding to fill the, uh, the spaces where all the negativity was, where all of the difficult and challenging things that you've been through and all of the emotions that were associated with that. Now all that space that that occupied in you um, cleared. And so what we have here now is the space for the good things to grow. Good Lord, I don't know what that was. What about this very funky? Thank you. Oh, it's fucking fucked off down the side of the table somewhere. I hate it when they do that. Oh, I found it. It's fine. So we've got the two of wands, interestingly, there. We've got the queen of swords and we've got the sun appearing again. And I, I do get a sense here of... Oh, there's the Ace of Swords at the bottom of the deck. I'll just pop it in between those cards there so you can see what I'm looking at. Right. <clears throat> you are at a crossroads at the moment, but... And I've seen the Two of, two of Wands mean... It, it's been meaning this for the last six weeks and nothing else. So I guess it's about a crossroads energy. But what we're not talking about is the this way or this way. We're not talking about the, the pendulum swing of extremes where you either do everything bad or you do everything good and you know, you're know you presented with a crossroads where you've got basically fucking Mordor on one side and the Shire on the other, right? That's not the kind of crossroads that we're looking at here. More, it is, it's something very subtle and something very nuanced. It is the decisions that you make a hundred times a day, two hundred times a day, about what you are going to fill your time with and what you are going to allow yourself to think about and whether you brush your teeth or not, or whether you, you know, you put on your shoes and go for a walk or not, you know, all of these little things. Because the cumulative effect of these over time is a change of habit and there's something that's been I, I think habit is a really good word because there feels like some, there's been something quite habitual about the way that you have lived your life right in, in sections of your life it has been extremely habitual and this this night of uh, ones here is the presence of mind to be able to look at what is habit and decide whether or not it is a valuable habit that you want to keep in your life you know you look to me like you're changing things around so the the energy of the past is now no longer dictating the future because in although there's a lot of very useful stuff in there for you there's a very there's a lot of very painful stuff in there for you your perspective has changed so the here and now becomes the most important thing and because of that the awareness that you're bringing to that two of wands as it presents to you every single day. Am I going to do this thing or am I not going to do this thing? 
<clears throat> am I not going to do this thing? Am I going to beat myself up about not doing this thing? And if I am, is that something that I want? And maybe I might actually feel more inclined to do the thing that I wasn't going to do because I know that I'll beat myself up if I don't do it. You know, this is just an example of a thought process. But I like the fact that you've got the Queen of Swords here because the Queen of Swords is being very, very logical, very rational, very reasonable, very discerning about the way that you are tackling each one of these little crossroads in your life, you know? The the biggest changes that we can bring into our lives, and when some, you know, when we talk about big changes and transformations and that sort of thing, more often than not, we are talking, you know, tower level stuff, death level stuff. You know, these big tower, big big tarot cards that come in and, um, you know, tell us that the universe is about to, I know, pull the rug out from underneath us in some sort of way, right? It's moving us out of our comfort zone. It's, uh, it, it, it's a, it's a kick in the shins to our complacency right but what I'm seeing here is something much more orderly something much more conscious and um, something almost much more gentle it's autonomous it's coming from you right you you're deciding where you're going from this point on uh, and the Sun coming out twice here <sighs> I think I said in the, your last reading back in December that, that what I felt more than anything else is that you were so fucking bored of, of that energy that kind of followed you around, that you knew on some level you were perpetuating. I was like, I'm so fucking done with this now. I don't want to experience this anymore. And the thing that's really tipped the scales here is the recognition of the fact that you're the one who gets to control it. Now, will it be easy? No. Will you wobble at times? Possibly. Will you be afraid? Almost certainly. Is that going to stop you doing it? I don't think so. No, that's bravery. That's courage right there. It's looking for the sun. It's, it's allowing the sun in and not feeling like in some way we are not worthy of it or not feeling guilty about it. Because I think that's something that's been plaguing Virgo quite a lot, is this sense of low-level guilt about something. And, you know, given that I know broadly what kind of experiences <coughs> Virgos have been having over the last two years or so, I mean, I feel like guilt would play a part in that. Grief plays a part in that too. What I'm seeing here, Virgo, is are these small atomic habits, right? Where you change tiny little things, but you keep them going consistently. Like I said, the end result is a huge change, but it is one that is manageable for you. Because I think if everything changed too fast, you would probably panic. You know, this Ace of Swords that I wanted to bring your attention to here at the bottom of the deck, the Shadow card, speaks to truth. It's as simple as that, it is truth. It is an unassailable truth that you have come to, and that is that you get to dictate what you do, how you do it, when you do it, why you do it. You're in charge of yourself, you know? And there might have been points where you, you'd wanted somebody to come and save you. You'd wanted some sort of external influence to come along and just alleviate the burden for you. And the sad fact is that that's not how how it works. It just isn't how it works. And in the absence of some sort of external saviour of, of whatever sort, all you really have is you. And some people would find that very uncomfortable. Maybe you have found it uncomfortable at times. But I think that there's something incredibly empowering in that realisation. There's responsibility, but there's also liberation. I mean, look here, we've got the second the second of the aces that we have, and it's the ace of pentacles. And like I said right at the beginning there, I felt like there was a, a shift towards um, opportunity. Right? Whether you're noticing it and doing something about it or whether you're actively creating it for yourself, it doesn't really matter. It, what it's talking about is the shift in attention. 
right? Away from the things that were awful and, you know, um, <clears throat> the emotions that have been associated with that which has grieved you for however long. <clears throat> to expansion of the good shit, the really good shit, Virgo. Does it mean that it's going to be all sunshine and rainbows and unicorns? And, uh, oh my, no, no, absolutely not. But what's going on here is a restructuring of you and one that is is having you train yourself to look for the better things to look for the good things you've had your fill of the rest of the stuff and now it's time to start shifting that around however you've got the emperor and the uh, page of swords underneath here and i think that that's incredible for certainly for some of you you are considering the possibility of some sort of study I would just throw that in there because that's that's being it's being shown to me here, right? And and that would be study of um, hmm, possibly of a higher level sort of thing. Like some of you might be moving into positions where you are managing other people or you are responsible for other people. That's possible too. I and mean, see that that emperor together with the the page of swords. That is a thing. But some of you might be looking to move into. <clears throat> into learning about stuff in a way that is not so structured and not so hierarchical, right? So perhaps not the established university route or something like that. Maybe you're just going, actually, I've got a bit of time, I've got a bit of energy. I'm going to start looking into different healing modalities or different esoteric modalities. Or maybe I want to take up a hobby or something like that, right? There's, there's a space that's been created and there's a desire of you to fill it in some way. <coughs> Tell me about Someone just screamed outside the window. Why oh, yeah, about the Emperor, please? Why is the Emperor here? We've got the Wheel of Fortune. Mm. Now, I, <clears throat> those two things together speak to me quite clearly of you getting your shit together. And you may feel like this is occurring just because it's time for it to occur. And maybe in some ways that's absolutely correct. But it feels like there is... That you here are a cog in a bigger machine. That whenever the wheel of fortune comes up it does talk about the things that that we have learned and the changes that we make as a result of what we have learned and how our fortunes then improve as a result but there's something there's something much more directed about this particular wheel of fortune here so like i said you may feel like you're just kind of pottering along and and, and doing your own thing and making your own discoveries and whatnot but there is a sense that you are being you are being directed into position for something you know what about this page of swords please what's the page of swords here we've got the magician hmm a few cards that dropped out to the to the side we've got the chariot again the three of cups and the king of swords <clears throat> i'm not going to take them because they didn't jump but they're an interesting set of cards nonetheless because it does talk about goal setting and victory and decision making and socializing which is something virgo that you've been quite i don't know i say allergic to but you've been certainly less interested in in embracing for quite a long time you know what we've got here is you <sighs> starting on a road that will end up taking you to magician status uh, i feel like that's so clearly laid out there I, I don't really have anything else to say about it probably at this point it's have you having you go where well, i'm just trying to you know <laughs> i'm just trying to find something to occupy my time i'm just trying to find something that staves away the dark thoughts while i concentrate on the light well there's a mastery there of self, of energy, of thought that is so much more powerful than the way it's been termed just there, right? You know, it's almost like the words undermine the energy that is going into doing what it is. And it's almost like you, uh, you don't realize quite how important what you are doing here is at the moment. You know, the, <clears throat> the Page of Swords, in addition to being the card of the, the active learner, you know, the scholar, whatever, is also a card of 
broadening your horizons, at making connections between things that you did not see before. I mean, sometimes it seems to me like it's a different way of thinking about the world. And when it's teamed up here with a card that talks about planning and strategy and control and getting your shit together, it's controlling you and your direction and where you want to go. We have opportunities showing up a plenty and we have the magician. Right? You actually have all the tools you need to pull off whatever it is that you want to do. I just want to point out I've got the magician. No, I haven't. I've got the emperor at the bottom of the deck again. Now it's <coughs> We've got the Fool and the Ace of Wands. You're getting ready for something. The thing is, I am not sure how many of you are actually aware of the fact that you're getting ready for something. Right? The Ace of Wands is a card of living differently. And that, in and of itself, although it's an Ace, could have been quite a subtle thing. If we kind of link it back to that Two of two of uh, Wands, and it's like, well, I'm going to do this thing, I'm going to do this thing, I'm going to choose to do these little habit changes. But it's paired with the Fool. And the pair of them are paired with the Magician. Which suggests to me that there's a step up here that, whilst called in by you, created by you, whichever way you want to put it, right, um, has the capacity to be The start of something really beautiful, definitely the start of a new cycle. I mean, the fool often talks about trust as well, and it could be that you are actually trusting yourself to start something anew. You might not feel like the magician at the moment, but possibly that might come in later down the road, right? And having a bit of trust that you might feel better about this a little bit, you know, down the way means that you don't stop yourself from doing one little thing every day that takes you a little bit closer to what it is that you're supposed to do. But again, with this energy of the, the Wheel of Fortune over the top of it here, I actually feel like there's something bigger at play here for you. Now, <clears throat> when we move into January and what January holds for you, we have the Six of Swords, which, which talks about moving away from something, right? In the Six of Swords, we're moving away from the conflict and the strife that it was in the Five of Swords. And the Five of Swords can also talk about self-sabotage. It can talk about the, the cognitive loops that we get stuck in, where we um, we find that our oh, certain patterns of thinking that we didn't recognize that we were actually in. Um, you know, sometimes we don't know that we can think differently about things until something happens that breaks that loop, right? It causes us to, to turn around and challenge our mode of thinking and being like, what the fuck is this? This is no good to me, you know. Um, <clears throat> I didn't realize that I could think differently about it. I didn't realize that I was allowed. It's interesting, I've had that feeling several times in my life. It's like, I didn't think I could do that and suddenly here I am doing it. Like, why did nobody tell me that that was allowed, that that was a thing that I could do, you know? It, it's that level of bafflement about it. <clears throat> so we have you moving away from a particular pattern of thinking that now is no longer for you, right? When we combine it with all of these initiatory cards that we see here, this is a, it feels like it's kind of moving to a safe distance away from a particular pattern, a particular set of thoughts that have no place in where you go next. We have the Four of Pentacles, and we have the Ten of Pentacles here. And what I like about this Triple Goddess Tarot is that, you know, when when this card's in the upright like this, it says to me either that it's talking of, you know, holding on to something too tight and not allowing it to flow, or it can talk about the need to release, uh, you know, and so therefore, as a corollary, the need to release something. Or it can talk about holding on to things just hard enough, right? Just just enough because they're important. What I like about the Triple Goddess is it totally flips this around, right? We've got a totally different scene to what we're usually accustomed to see in the Four of Pentacles. We've got one woman who looks like she's in the act of offering her pentacle somewhere, her one pentacle somewhere. And she's got these ones to her side where, and there's there's no clamping down on those, right? She hasn't got her feet stood on them. She's not clutching one to her chest. They're sitting there easily next to her. 
And it could be that you, you could look at that scene and, and suggest that she was in a position of vulnerability, but she's got a big old smile on her face. She doesn't look threatened to me in any way. It's like there's an ease of release here for you. You know what's important and you'll keep a hold of that. But everything else, particularly as it pertains to the way that your mind has thought for such a long time, are being allowed to leave. Now, when we come to the Ten of Pentacles, we've got that same energy of legacy and heritage that I was talking about in the, in the Hierophant. We've got that same feeling of commitment. We've got the, the chariot cards, you know, shown its face a couple of times here. And what ultimately what the Ace of Pentacles wants to do is turn into the Ten. Like, here's the goal that I was talking about. It's like whatever you're letting go of in the Four, you know that what's, what isn't going to be left there is an empty space. It seems like you're kind of getting into a flow now where every little thing that you release allows the presentation of something new to come in. And because you're starting to think about what your goals actually are, what the Ten of Pentacles represents to you, whatever that may be, um, whatever it is, it is accumulation, right? So it is an end goal. It's something that you're looking to achieve. Ace of Pentacles, the Fool. Ace of Wands, even the magician numbered numbered one as he is. I feel like this month you're going to really start to understand where it is you want to go, what is important, what represents structure and stability to you and what does not, what is in fact holding you back. Tell me about this Ten of Pentacles, please. <clears throat> we've got the Devil and we've got the Three of Wands with the moon card at the bottom of the deck. Now, the devil... Well, first off, he deals with things of a material nature. And it could be that you're thinking about taking on a second job, or maybe you're losing... Not losing a job, I'll put it that way. <clears throat> maybe you're ditching a job. Because what you're doing is, is being stuck on a hamster wheel of just working for working's sake, right? I'm working because I'm trying to pay for all of these things, and actually... Maybe I should just not have these things, right? Maybe it's about stripping it down a little bit for you. But the Ten of Pentacles is about expanding. And the devil is often about expansion of these material resources too. So one way of looking at that is being like, well, oh, yeah, like maybe I need an extra job. Maybe I need to do something else. Maybe I need to give my time and attention and all of the things, you know, my labor in order that I get some money back. But the other way of looking at this, and I feel like this one is, is more relevant as I'm sitting here looking at it, is understanding how your goals have changed in light of losing a lot of the fear that was operative before, right? So the, the devil at its most basic represents a fear. And it can be, you know, represented by toxicity or codependence or, you know, extreme materialism or, or any of those other things, right? You can talk about a lot of things. But with this three of wands here, and it, I notice that they're kind of coming together and they're kind of facing each other off at this point with the moon underneath there. So like your subconscious desires, your subconscious will, your subconscious needs, like they seem to be coming out in the open in this way you facing the things that were initially very scary for you and now realizing that they're not that way at all it seems to have you shifting around what it is that that a goal is for you now what does success look like for you what are you prepared to put effort into to to make it bigger and make it successful and what was coming from a place of fear that seems very very clear to me because all of this reading is about winning, it's about succeeding, it's about protecting your energy, it's about winning, succeeding, it's about goal setting, <clears throat> it's about expansion of the things that feel good the way that you feel good, inviting more of that into your life. And 
this devil doesn't seem to have a bit it doesn't seem to have a chance at all to get its hooks into you in the same way that it always has done because you have changed right? you've given him a lot less fuel to work with than he's used to for you uh, he doesn't like that very much generally speaking That's, the devil's not a big fan of that sort of thing it feels like your ten of pentacles whatever that is is getting a huge overhaul in January so maybe where your home is what your home looks like two very different things maybe what you do for a job very very different your idea of what is stable and secure changing too I don't want to get too specific because uh, you know this is general reading and the way that it appears is going to be very different for each of you but it's coming from a really deep place with you now it's interesting that the king of pentacles is sitting underneath there because the king of pentacles suggests to me that you are starting to put in place a long-term plan and to be honest this fits very well with what i'm seeing down here so king of pentacles being taurus being the builder and being you know delayed gratification it all fits together beautifully when the fear is gone and you're in the moment and you want to expand all of the good things tell me that that doesn't change where you want to end up because i think that it does and by the end of january i think you'll have a very clear idea about that where that is to go i mean shit as i'm recording this we're, we're in the shadow period of uh, mercury mercury retrograde in capricorn and the retrograde energy will have us go back over things that we thought we knew we thought we understood to make sure that we've tidied up all of the loose ends right the addition of it being in Capricorn, and we're also about to have a, a new moon in Capricorn as well, <clears throat> is having us look, as Capricorn is a cardinal sign, right, it's pointing in a direction. It's, it's asking us to look at where it is that we want to go and start implementing the changes that are necessary for us to achieve a longer term goal. We're not talking about things in the short term. We're talking about longer term goals and those longer term goals could be about they could have an emotional component too it could be right i i am actually going to commit to doing i don't know a therapy session a week for six months right because i feel like that is necessary i feel like i am important enough to invest that time into uh, making sure that my my energy is in the right place again with this nine of pentacles here but it could be much more 3D than that, you know, it could be a, a simple case of, right, this is what my finances can afford, and this is hitherto the kind of lifestyle that I have attempted to um, <clears throat> to maintain, but I'm ready to throw everything up in the air and do things differently and save a lot of money as a result, because, uh, you know, I would rather live, um, live well on less then try and maintain something that is far too expensive, whether it's a house or a car or a lifestyle or whatever, um, and have to work so furiously in order to achieve it. Like, I feel like all of your values are being, they're becoming a bit more malleable, not in a bad way. It's like there's a fluidity to them, and that is a necessary result of who you are changing, right? The things that you wanted 10 years ago are not the same things that you want now. And they're certainly not the same things that you wanted 20 or 30 years ago. You have changed, so it's okay for this to change too. By the end of January, you're gonna have a much clearer idea of what that is going to look like for you personally. Even if you don't know exactly where you're going with it. It's like, it's tracking the feeling, you know? So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to go over to Vimeo now. I've been blathering on for far longer than I meant to, but this is very interesting. Yeah, well, it's very interesting indeed. So if you would like to join me over there, like I said, link is in the description box, along with all of the other links that I told you about at the beginning. Um, but this looks really good. January is very much a time for kind of going back over your plans, what you think you know versus what you actually know, who you think you are versus who you actually are, and how all of that changes where you want to go as a result. 
No, use that retrograde energy for what it for, you know, for what it's supposed to be used for. I right. know that I love you all very, very much, and I'll see you soon.